السلام عليكم ورحمة الله Welcome dear student to your Google Classroom Again with you your lecturer Dr. Lamis Khalil Muhammad Orthodontist at the POP Department College of Dentistry of Babylon University In the previous lecture I talking about the removable appliance Today, I will give for you lecture 7 of your uh, syllabus. It is also the second part of the removable appliance. In the previous lecture, we talking about the removable appliance, advantage, disadvantage, and the components of removable appliance. We're talking about the active component of removable appliance which represented the first component of it today in this lecture we'll talking about the retentive component the acrylic base plate the anchorage of the removable appliance so let us begin our lecture with it before I will talking about the retent of components of removable appliance, firstly let us know what we meaning by retention. What are the retention mean? I will give you a simple example about it. Here is in front of you is a horseshoe magnetic part. And in front of it, there is a ball, iron ball. When we make this magnetic become near or approximating for the iron ball, the iron ball will attract to this magnetic and fix to it and keep stable in its position without any movement when we catch the horse and move in our hand the iron ball still stable and fixed and adhere to this magnetic and not move so it retained to this magnetic and stable in its position so the retention means the stability of an object in its position without any movement of it. For the removable appliance, the retention mean the stability of the appliance inside the patient's mouth without dislodge of it. And this can be achieved by the using of retentive components of it. There are many types of retentive components for the removable appliance. The most common type of it, or today we will talking about five types. The first one and the most commonly used and represented the major retentive component that used almost in all removable appliances is called Adam clasp. This is the Adam clasp that will help us in anchorage and in retention. So it is a retentive component made from 0.7 mm hard stainless steel wire. It will give us both retention for the appliance and also help us in getting the anchorage. That will allow for the active component of removable appliance to work properly. The Adam clasp, generally, as you can see here, it will 
consists from many parts. It uh, consists of a bridge to U loop. The U loop it will be engaged into the mesobuccal and disto mesobuccal and distobuccal undercuts of the posterior teeth. And there will be a occlusal part. The occlusal part from the U loop to the occlusal part, there will be a three angles present. Angle A, this is the angle A. Here is, this is one, and this is also angle A. Then there will be angle B, this is the angle B. It is the starting on the occlusal uh, part of the uh, contact between the posterior teeth. This is angle B, and this is angle C. So we have three angles. A, B, and C. Then we will have a tag that will be embedded into the acrylic phase plate. So keep in your mind that almost all the removable appliance will contain Adamic class in their as a retentive component in their design. The second type that also can be used increased mostly, mostly in an appliance and needed to give us anterior retention is called a fitted labial arch. You take this uh, retentive component in your lab and it will be your homework for the next lab. So the fitted labial arch is represented uh, Retent of component that made from 0.7 mm hard stellar steel. As we mentioned for you in your lab, it will be either due on two incisors or maybe three incisors or maybe four incisors. And sometimes we can do a modification to include also the canine. The fitted labial arch from its name, it's called fitted labial arch. So it's not like the Howley arch, it should be come to touch fit to the anterior surface of the teeth in order to give us the retention that we need from it. The fitted labial arch will give us anterior retention and anchorage. So it's like Adam clasp. The Adam clasp gives us a retention posteriorly and help in anchorage. The fitted labial arch will give us anchorage, uh, add, help us in anchorage and give us a anterior retention. The third type of uh, retentive component is called ball and clasp. Ball and clasp. From its shape, it's end with a ball. This type of clasp used in removable appliance that need to be used with a fixed appliance. I mean when we have a compound a removable appliance come from fixed and removable a combination between the removable and fixed appliance. The ball and also it will be made from 0.7 hard stainless steel wire. The other type of uh, retentive component is called arrowhead clasp. Why it is called arrowhead? Also from its name, the head of the clasp is like the arrow shape. It is also made from 0.7 mm hard stainless steel wire. It will be uh, impressing into the impressure area of the teeth. The other type of retentive component is called circumferential clasp or called C clasp. It is also made like the others retentive component from 0.7 or from 0.8 mm hard stainless steel wires. This type of clasp or retentive component is help us or it will give us a supporting rather than retentive rule. Like the Adam clasp fitted labial arch give us a retention 
and help and encourage while the C clasp or circumferential clasp will help us uh, or give us a support rather than retention so it will used in design in addition to the presence of Adam clasp like and mainly it will be used on the deciduous teeth on the C for example on the C's and sometimes we need to use it in uh, retainers the most advantage of it it is have no occlusal parts like the Adam clasp no occlusal parts so there will be no interference with the occlusion this is the most advantage of it so these are the type of retains of components keep in your mind as i mentioned for you previously the most and common type of it that used almost in all appliances is the adam glass now the third type of or sorry the third component of removable appliance is the acrylic phase plates which is represented a major connector that connect all the other components of removable appliance generally it will be made from cold cure acrylic and sometimes from hot cure the acrylic base plates its thickness should be should be as thin as possible to reduce its bulkness and should be as thick as possible and thick enough to withstand the removing and inserting of the appliances to give us enough strength the acrylic base plate should be should be closely adapted to all teeth except the teeth that we need to induce a tooth movement for them the Acrylic base plate, in addition to its rule in connecting all other components of removable appliance, also it will be held in anchorage through contacting with the palatal surface of all the teeth that not be not need to be moved, and in addition time it will protects the palatal springs by cover it with acrylic the acrylic base plate have a modification of it we have two types of modification of acrylic base plates the first one is called anterior bite a plate This modification can be added to the mandibular appliance or to the maxillary appliance. The anterior body plane at the same time have two types. The first one is called flat anterior body plane. Before I talking about the types of anterior bite plane, firstly look for this. This is the acrylic base plate, the major connector. The anterior bite plane, it will be represented a bite of acrylic add to the maxillary or to the mandibular base plate of appliances come together the incisal or anterior surface of the teeth of the anterior teeth and it will be represented of two types flat anterior bite plane and inclined anterior bite plane 
what we meaning by flat, what we meaning by inclined, what are the properties of it, of each of, of them, uh, what are the indication of use of the flat and of the inclined anterior bites a plane? Tell me about the flat anterior bite plane. Looking for the space here, you can see here this. What are the type of the overbite in this picture? You can see that the lower incisor teeth come to touch the palatal surface of the soft tissue and not occlude on the cingulum of the upper incisor. So this type of overbite is called traumatic deep bite or deep bite. When we put anterior bite plane add to the acrylic base plate with a flat type like this picture here on the right side of you, you can see this is the acrylic base plate and to this line. Then we put a additional modification of it, which is the anterior bite plane. Here is it with a flat a plane. This anterior bite plane, I mean the flat anterior bite plane, it should be it should be wide enough so that the patient cannot bite behind it. Second, it should be flat and have no inclined anteriorly or posteriorly should be flat to prevent or to avoid the mandibular retrusion okay the a flat anterior bite plane here you can see when the patient come to occlude or close his mouth the lower incisor teeth here come to occlude on the acrylic base plates, I mean on the anterior, flat anterior bite plane. This will lead to what? This will lead you to prevent the posterior teeth from coming in contact or in occlusion. You can see the difference here. Here is incomplete occlusion. We have a a traumatic deep bite here or deep bite and the posterior teeth in maximum intercuspation after we insert a flat anterior bite plane appliance you can see that the posterior teeth out of contact so the action of anterior flat anterior bite a plane when we put it a flat anterior bite plane, it will be led to separate it, the posterior teeth from come in contact during occlusion. And this will lead to a, a presence of a distance or a space between them that will lead to a low for the posterior teeth for over eruption until they come in contact in cusp-to-cusp -cusp relation. And this over-eruption will lead to what corrected the deep bite that we have in the anterior teeth. So, so the flat anterior bite plane, it will be indicated to correct the deep bite by separating the molar teeth during the occlusion. That will be allowing, as I mentioned, for their over eruption. And it will be led to decrease the overbite of, of course, growing patient. After so this is will be used for a growing patient. As you know, that our bite like a scissor. When we open the bites, I mean, when will there will be a 
over eruption of the posterior teeth about 1 million, it will lead to open the bite anteriorly with 2 million because our occlusion like a scissor open the bite posteriorly 1 million lead to open the bite anteriorly 2 million. So this is about a flat anterior bite plane. What about the other type of anterior bite plane? Before we talking about the other type, looking for this case here. This is the patient have a class 2. You can see here in molar, molar relation, the mesiobuccal cusp of the upper 6 anteriorly located to the uh, buccal groove of the lower 6. So we have a class 2 in molar relation. Also the canine, you can see here, it is uh, not located in the impressure uh, area between the fore and the lower canine. It is anteriorly to it, so it is have also a class 2 canine relation. Also for the incisor, you can see that the lower incisor teeth occlude uh, with a deep bite on the palatal a soft tissue of the palate. So we have a patient with a class 2 here. We need to do a correction for the deep bite. So we, we will wear for him an uh, anterior flat anterior bite plane that led to open the bite posteriorly, allowing for the posterior teeth, all of them, for over eruption. And this will lead to corrected the deep bite for the growing patient. Now, Now, about the inclined anterior bite plane, you can see the difference between the shape of the flat anterior bite plane and inclined anterior bite plane. It have a slope anteriorly directed here. It is like the flat anterior like plane in its action. It will be also indicated for the correction of the deep bite as the inclusion of it, it will be led also to its have inclination, as I mentioned for you. It is led to do a separation for the posterior teeth, prevent its occlusion, led to over eruption of posterior teeth, and uh, open the bite or correct the deep bite of the anterior teeth. In addition to that, for, because of its inclination, in addition to its action in uh, correcting the deep bias, it is also will be used to correcting the increased overjet. How? Let us see how it will uh, lead to correct both the deep bias and the increased overjet. You can see here in this picture, this is the actual position of the teeth. If you can imagine that without the presence of this inclined anterior bite plane, that the lower incisor tooth will come to occlusion on the soft pellets, on the soft tissue of the pellets. Also, you can 
uh, imagine that the distance between this lower incisor and this upper incisor is have a very uh, much uh, distance horizontal more than 4 mm which is the normal value for the overjet so we have both traumatic deep bites and increased in the amount of overjet in cases of like the cases of a class 2 div 1 in this condition we will insert for patient uh, appliance with any client anterior bite plane firstly the any client anterior bite plane will lead to correct the bite the deep bite through uh, separating the posterior teeth and allowing for the posterior teeth for over eruption so this is the first uh, achievement with the inclined anterior bite plate and the same time the inclination that we have in the inclined anterior bite plate will lead to proclined the lower incisor anteriorly at the same time enhancing the forward growth of the mandible and retarding the growth of the maxilla so it will be act like a functional appliance this is the natural position of the tooth before the uh, treatment after we insert the appliance with any client interior bite plane the mandible will be proclined uh, lower incisor proclined anteriorly and together with enhance the forward growth of the mandible and you can see that the lower incisor come to occlude on the cingulum of the upper incisor also you can see so by this you can see we correct the traumatic deep bite and at the same time you can see that the amount of the overjet uh, here is before in the old position and you can see this is the uh, amount of the overjet after we correct the overjet with the inclined anterior bites a plane so this is about the anterior bite plane whether it is a flat or whether it is a inclined the flat anterior bite plane used for correcting the deep bite while the inclined used for correct both the deep bite and the increased overjet and i explained for you the mode of action of each one and how it will correct the deep bite and the increased overjet the other type of modification of acrylic base plate is the posterior bites a plane we talked about the posterior bite plane too much in your labs and uh, here you can see that the posterior bite plane it is the uh, part of anterior bite uh, it is a part of acrylic base plate that can be added to also maxillary or to the mandibular appliances and it will become to cover the occlusal surface of the posterior teeth from canine to go posteriorly prevent the canine premolars and molars from come in contact between the upper and lower teeth this will allow for the anterior teeth i mean the incisors to be moved without any occlusal interference so what are the indication of need or the cases that I will need to be used to be used uh, uh, sorry to use a posterior bite plane with it and put it in our design firstly we need to use a posterior bite plane in cases of anterior cross bite whether it is single tooth or a group of teeth the second case is that i will be need to use the posterior bite plane is when i have a false unilateral buccal posterior cross bite that can be diagnostic 
clinically through the displacement of the mandible to one side. We have a shifting in the midline of the lower. Like this case, you can see here in this case, this jack screw, it is called a 3D screw. It can give us at the same time anterior expansion and posterior expansion. We put a occlusal, occlusal surface of posterior with posterior cover, the occlusal surface, sorry, with a posterior bite plane in order to allowing for the uh, dental alveolar expansion of the maxilla and also allowing for a uh, procrination of the anterior teeth. So we need to use a 3D expander. So these are the indication of uses of posterior bite plane. We need to use it when we have a anterior cross bite or when we have a false unilateral buccal posterior cross bite. So keep this in your mind. This is was about the third component of removable appliance. What about the fourth component? of removable appliance. Before I will talking about the fourth component of removable appliance, let us firstly talking about the law of gravity and the uh, law of Isaac Newton and uh, law of forces. Isaac Newton in the past one day, he was set down under a tree of apple and suddenly one of the apple fall down on the ground and as Hakka Newton give for us the law of gravity of it and then later on will give us a, a law of forces the law of forces for is Hakka Newton he state that about the forces he state that to every action there is always opposite an equal reaction. I mean, for each action, there is a reaction equal in amount opposite in its direction. So, depending on this force, let us give this example for action and reaction. Imagine with me, this is a wall and this is a girl want to play on her scooters. What she want to do now, she come to stand be behind, uh, in front of the, sorry, beside the chair, in front uh, of the wall, and she put her hand on the wall, trying to apply a force against to the wall, so that to go forward and play on her scooter. So, the girl will apply a force against the wall in this direction. This force, girl's force on the wall, is called action force. The wall will apply a force against the girl called walls, girl, walls force on gale. It will be equal in amount but opposite in a direction as you can see in the uh, green arrow. This green arrow or walls force is called a reaction force. By the effect of reaction force the girl will be pushed and forward go to play on her scooter so this is a reaction and action force here in this example we get the advantage of the reaction force as the girl get the benefit of the reaction and play on her scooter and go forward in our removable appliance we always depending on the action force 
and we want to consult the reaction force from come to effect on other teeth. How? Let us discover this. The fourth component in of uh, the removable com of removable appliance is called anchorage. As a definition for the anchorage, it can be defined as an imaginary component of removable appliance that used to resist the unwanted tooth movement. What I mean by this? According to this design in front of you, the active component here you can see in the picture in this design is consists of two finger springs used to do a distal movement for both canine in left and right. The retentive component it is consists of Adam class put it on the six, and you should. Uh, know that we need in addition to the atom we need also for a fitted labial arch to put on the anterior teeth however the third component it is consists of acrylic base plate that the major connect major component that come to contact all the teeth except the teeth that we will need to move it the fourth component which i mean the anchorage it is imaginary components. Let us know how we will get it. After we do activation for the finger spring, we will give a action force. Action force. The action force on this canine of the left side is equal to 0.3 Newton. And the force direction is distally or posteriorly. The action force that will be applied on the right canine, it is also equal to 0.3 Newton and directed distally or posteriorly. According or depending on the Ishaq Newton law, for each action there will be a reaction. So, according to this law, there will be a reaction force equal to 0.6 Newton and directed anteriorly or mesial. So, this is the reaction force and this is the action force. What I need here, I need purely the action force to be act only by do a distalization for the canines. While the reaction force I not need it, I need to cancel this force. How I cancel it? Through the anchorage. As this reaction force, if I if I leave it to act, it will try to move the teeth like the five to move it mesially, like to move the anterior teeth anteriorly or do a procreation for them. And absolutely I not need this teeth to move. I just want the canines to move in distal direction. So in order to prevent the movement of other teeth and to resist this unwanted tooth movement, I should achieve the anchorage. How I can cancel this reaction for and prevent the unwanted tooth movement of the other teeth except the canines through these following steps. Firstly, I need to use a full extension of acrylic base plate to engage many teeth so that the reaction force will be distributed over a large number of teeth in addition to 
large distance of the lateral surface so that the force that will be reached for each teeth will be unable to induce tooth movement or to induce a changing in the uh, tooth and their supporting structures. So the reaction force will be cancelled. In addition to full coverage of acrylic base plate, I have to use many retentive components like agdam clasp, fitted labial arch, in order to make the acrylic base plate fit to the teeth and to acrylic base plate. Sometimes this retentive component and acrylic base plate will be un, uh, not enough to distribute it or to cancel this reaction force. So I will need for additional appliances. This appliances is called etc. oral anchorage, like the heat gear. This is the heat gear, you can see it. This is called, this one on the scalp is called a high ball headgear. This is on the neck, is called cervical headgear. In addition to uh, its use as active component, we can use it as anchorage type, as etc. oral anchorage. Uh, through this, you can see this uh, arch wire. It is called a face ball. This is the arch. It will be come to contact through a hook with the internal appliance. The hook will be put it here on the bridge solder to a bridge of the other hook. Uh, then the, intro, the internal arms of this face ball will be inserted in this hook. And the outer arm come to contact with this high ball head gear. And the forces, I mean the reaction force, will translate it through the hook to the in internal or uh, internal arms, to the outer arms of the face ball. And it will be translated through it to the skull of the uh, to the scalp or to the bone of the skull. So the force will be distributed over a large distance or of the uh, skull and by this it will be cancelled. I mean the reaction force. So this is the anchorage and how we can get the anchorage and what are the important and importance of anchorage. It is important to cancel the reaction force and to prevent the unwanted tooth movement for the posterior or any tooth that I not need to do a tooth movement for it. So these are the four components of removable appliance. Now, after we do the design for removable appliance now we need to do a fittings of removable appliance inside the patient's mouth before we do a fittings of removable appliance inside the patient mouth we need to do a uh, several steps the first one is before the insertion we need to following tips firstly we should check the appliance that we have a correct appliance and correct design for the correct patient. Second, we should show the appliance for the patient before we do insertion, explain for him the design and how it will be work. Then we should checking the surface of the appliance. If there is any roughness, we should do a smoothening for it before the insertion. Then we will go to do insertion for appliance inside the patient's mouth. How? Firstly, we should insert the anterior part of the appliance to fit on the anterior teeth. Then we do a pushing of a press and push the acrylic base plate upward until engage the Adam clasp. After that, we take the appliance to do adjustment for the retentive component. Then, after the appliance be retained 
and get a retention inside the patient mouth, we should go to do a activation for the active systems. Sometimes we need, uh, if it is a need to do a free movement for the teeth, we should do a trimming for the acrylic, especially when we uh, use, for example, a Howley arch as active component used for retraction of the anterior teeth, we need to do a trimming for the acrylic behind the tooth in order to give a free movement for the teeth in palatal direction. Then we should do a demonstration for the patient how to insert and how to remove and make the patient insert and remove in front of us. After that, we should give the patient a instruction. Firstly, we should tell the patient that he may face uh, some discomfort uh, with the removal appliance in speaking during the first day. Uh, tell them that it will be disappear later on. Also, we should tell him that to wear the appliance during day and during night and just to remove it during meals only and when we remove it we should tell the appliance to put it inside a glass with water in order to prevent any changes in its dimensions also we should tell the patient to clean their mouth and the appliance regularly to prevent any fungal infection or bad odor on it. Now, I will give you a question and give you a few seconds to thinking about it. When the patient come to us, after we give him an um, instruction and the patient wear the appliance and go, and come to us in the next appointment. How can I discover that the patient wear the appliance or not? You should keep in your mind that we have um, some science. I will, I can depend on it to discover that the patient wear the appliance or not. Firstly. The appliance will come to us when looking for the appliance. You can see it, it looks like a new. There is no change in its color, no accumulation of food, no accumulation of saliva. It just looks like a new appliance. So this can give us indication as a science for that the patient not wear the appliance. Second, the patient have no or little or no tooth movement. So the patient come to us and answer when we asking them, you will not wear the appliance or yes, you wear or not. Say they will uh, told us, yes, I wear the appliance. And they swear for us, we wear the appliances. But it's not right. Yes, maybe they wear the appliance, but not wear it for enough time. Not wear it over the uh, duration threshold. They wear it only for four hours on, or maybe for six hours only per day. And this is just a duration threshold. I need the patient to wear the appliance more than the duration threshold in order to induce the tooth movement. So there will be no or little tooth movement occur. Also, you can see that the patient still have a difficulty in removing and inserting the appliance. They not have any tolerated of it. Still the patient have a difficulty in speeching. Also, you can looking for the spring, still active. So all this means the patient not wear the appliance. So these signs, I hope to keep the signs in your mind because you will need it. 
uh, inshallah in the next year when you go to your clinic and do a removable appliance for your patient and you should know that the patient uh, if they wear the appliance or not so keep these signs in your mind now i will give you uh, some cases and uh, the design that i need to do for each one it is starting uh, of course i give uh, this cases an example in your uh, pdf lecture and here i will go to explain it this case you can see here the patient have a buccal post canine uh, this buccal email post canine come with mesial uh, angulation so we have a mesially angulated canine and buccally malpost mesially angulated and buccally malpost canine so what are the design that i need to use of a movable appliance for this case first you should know this the patient have a class one uh, molar relationship incisor a classification and molar classification this is central this is lateral this is the c primary canine and this is the four okay five six so this is the canine with mesially angulated buccally malpose how i can uh, or what are the uh, design of removable appliance that i need to uh, do for this uh, patient i need to do uh, active component with a modified buccal canine retractor retentive component i need to use adam clasp on sexes and fitted labial arch anteriorly third component is acrylic base 